Welcome to this presentation to meet the experts titled Lung Cancer Early Detection, Who, Why, How with our expert Haley Tolbert, Lung Cancer Screening Program Coordinator. Meet the Experts is brought to you by Moffitt Cancer Center's Patient Library and Welcome Center. Please visit moffitt.org slash meet the experts to see our upcoming sessions. The content of this presentation is not intended to be medical advice, and the viewers should consult their physician should they have any medical questions. Viewers should not rely on information containing this presentation for immediate or urgent medical needs. If you think you might be having a medical emergency, call your physician, go to the nearest emergency department, or call 911 immediately. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking care because you watch this presentation. And now please welcome our expert, Haley Tolbert. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so thankful for this opportunity to be here to share information on lung screening and raise awareness of such a life-saving screening test that we have available at Moffitt and around the nation that unfortunately is extremely underutilized. So I hope that this presentation is informative um, and that you're able to take some of this information back to your network of family members, friends, coworkers, and patients to raise awareness of lung screening so that we can collectively save lives. I wanted to start out just by setting the stage on how detrimental lung cancer is in our country. Um, and to do that, we can look at the estimated new ca cancer cases um, in 2022. You can see that lung cancer accounts for 12% of all new cancer cases in men and 13% in women. And to put that into perspective, that's one in 15 men expected to develop lung cancer and one in 17 women expected to develop lung cancer. We can also look at lung cancer in terms of estimated deaths. Unfortunately, lung cancer is the leading cause of all cancer-related deaths, accounting for 21% in both men and women, and this accounts for more deaths than breast, colon, and prostate cancers combined. There's such a high mortality rate in part because most lung cancers are detected at an advanced stage when treatment options are limited and survival rates are dismal. This pie chart shows that 47% of all lung cancer cases are diagnosed at an advanced stage compared to just 23% being diagnosed at an early stage. This chart here shows the five-year survival rate for lung cancer um, at Moffitt in the gray bars compared to the national average in blue. You can see that when diagnosed early, lung cancer has a 70% five-year survival rate at Moffitt and a 61% five-year survival at a national average. Compare that to the advanced stage five-year survival rates of just 16% at Moffitt, and you can really see the importance of moving the needle forward and being able to diagnose patients at the earliest possible stage stage. And the best way to do that is through early detection through lung cancer screening using a low-dose CT machine. There are numerous trials that have sought to evaluate the effectiveness of lung cancer screening. The Nelson trial is one of those that is internationally recognized. It found that um, compared to no screening at all, when screening with low-dose CT, there is a 50% 50 um, of all lung cancers were found at an early stage. There's a 26% lung cancer mortality reduction in men and up to a 61% mortality reduction in women. Another really eye-opening um, finding that this trial led to was that only 320 people need to be screened to prevent one lung cancer death. And when we look at what the number needed to screen to prevent one death and other well-recognized and utilized screenings are, you can really see the effectiveness and feasibility of lung cancer. Um, for instance, cholesterol screening, it takes 420 people to save one life. It takes 800 people to be screened for colon cancer to save one life and 1,500 people to be screened for breast cancer to save one life. Fortunately, lung cancer screening is extremely easy and it's very fast um, and it's recommended for people that meet the high risk criteria for lung screening to receive this annually. It's pain free. It takes less than a minute. There's no preparation or needles required. And it also uses an extremely low amount of radiation um, compared to your normal diagnostic CT. Um, so for chest x-rays, 0.1 MSV, mammograms are 0.4 MSV, a low-dose CT um, uses 1.4 MSV, uh, whereas a diagnostic CT is 7 MSV. So it is safe and it uses an extremely low amount of radiation. 
So who is eligible for lung cancer screening? The 2021 United States Preventive Service Task Force recommendations um, were expanded compared to previous years. It um, lowered the age to 50 to 80 years of age, currently smoking or quit smoking within 15 years, and a 20 or greater pack year smoking history. Pack year is what we use to understand a person's lifetime exposure to cigarette smoking. And you can calculate this by multiplying the number of years smoked times the number of cigarette packs smoked per day. Per day. Um, for example, if a patient smoked one pack of cigarettes per day for 20 years, they would be eligible because that would be a 20 pack year smoking history. Um, it is important to note that this pack year only um, evaluates a person's um, exposure to cigarette smoking, and it does not evaluate exposures to vape smoking, marijuana, um, or cigar smoking. There are millions of people that meet the strict criteria. In fact, there's 14.5 million um, that are eligible for screening, which is more people than reside in the state of Pennsylvania. There's also a significant amount of lives that could be saved per year if every eligible person were screened. It's estimated that 60,000 lives could be saved. And to put that into perspective, that's about the same amount of people that can fit into Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Unfortunately, the screening test is extremely underutilized and many lives um, are lost to lung cancer every year simply because um, they did not undergo lung screening. Um, so this graph here shows um, the number or the percentage of eligible people um, that undergo lung screening, breast screening, cervical screening, and colon screening. For example, this is showing that 73% of eligible women um, are partaking in breast screening. And it is extremely eye-opening to see that just 6% of people that are eligible for lung screening are um, participating in this screening test nationally. Um, and when we look at it in Florida, we are one of the worst states with lung screening utilization. Only 3% of people considered high risk were screened. And this number really just shows the importance of raising awareness of lung screening, who is eligible, how to access lung cancer screening um, so that we can improve um, the utilization of this life-saving screening test. Because lung screening is underutilized and it also limits who can partake in it because um, it has to be a person 50 to 80 with a, a smoking history, many programs across the nation are also establishing incidental nodule programs. Um, and so together with the lung screening, um, these two programs can really move the needle forward so that we can detect lung cancer at its earliest stage. So what is an incidental nodule? Um, these nodules are detected in CT imaging that was done for another reason um, besides screening for lung cancer. Um, so this is usually done for an acute episode in an ER or hospital setting. For example, if a car, ca car crash injuries led to a CT of the chest and lung nodules were identified in that setting. Um, that's probably an extremely overwhelming situation. The patient may have um, other health um, care necessities to take care of, so the nodule may be overlooked. There may be no formal follow-up initiated. It could be reviewed by a non-expert. Um, the significance could be completely missed and the patient didn't understand that um, the nod a nodule could lead to lung cancer, um, which may make patients present at later stages with advanced disease. So Moffitt's new Lung Cancer Early Detection Center, which we have abbreviated to LEAD, um, will be comprised of three separate clinics. First being our lung screening program, which is a comprehensive program um, that provides patient navigation. It's accredited for the high quality that we offer. Um, and then the other clinic is the lung nodule clinic for patients that may not necessarily meet the qualifications to participate in lung screening, but they have a previously identified lung nodule out in the community. Our team of expert um, clinicians are able to um, expedite the evaluation process for a lung nodule so that we can get treatment started as soon as possible. And the third piece is for is our surveillance clinic, which is for um, patients that have previously on undergone treatment for lung cancer and need to be evaluated very closely because there is an increased risk for reoccurrence of lung cancer. 
And we abbreviated this center to LEAD um, with the purpose of leading the way to the prevention and cure of lung cancer. For more information, we do have a Moffitt.org page set up at Moffitt.org slash Lung Cancer Early Detection Center. I briefly just wanted to highlight some significant challenges with treating lung cancer. There are many, but just high level of a few that come to mind is back to the mortality. 46% of patients are diagnosed and at advanced stage when survival rates are low and treatment options are limited. There's also extreme health disparities. Black patients have been shown to have lower survival rates and are more likely to be diagnosed and at advanced stage compared to white patients. In addition to a um, later stage diagnosis leading to lower or higher mortality rates, there's also the financial toxicity piece. Treatment costs are significantly higher for patients with stage four lung cancer um, compared to stage one lung cancer. This graph here shows that non-small cell lung treatment costs per month by stage. Um, stage one treatment costs per month are about $7,000 compared to stage four treatment cost of $21,000. Um, so this really shows the need to, to, to be able to diagnose lung cancer earlier so that we have more stage one um, patients. And in conclusion, I just wanted to highlight some um, very important facts and eye-opening facts that I hope that you can take back um, to your friends and your family members. One is lung cancer is the deadliest cancer. It claims more lives than breast, colon, and prostate cancers combined. Lodo CT results in 26% and 61% mortality reduction in men and women, respectively. Lung cancer has over an 80% cure rate when caught early through low-dose CT. Only 320 people need to be screened with low-dose CT to prevent one death. Less than 6% of people considered high risk for lung cancer are receiving a lung screening test. And if every eligible person were screened, over 60,000 lives could be saved per year. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for viewing this session. We offer live Meet the Expert sessions through Zoom. To see a full list of upcoming sessions, please visit moffitt.org slash meet the experts or call 813-745-1690.